welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called Beaver Bridger Builder, an original story written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. Beaver Bridger Builder Once upon a time, in a deep piece of forest, there lived a sprawling colony of beavers. They were round and happy, with wide, splashing tails and chubby, whiskered cheeks. Their colony was isolated and peaceful, far from humans and predators, and nestled in a truly lovely bit of woods. The trees were tall and shady, the bark soft and silky, and of course, they had their river. The water was cerulean, which is a rich sky blue, and it looped back and forth through their woods like a bow around a present. In some places, the river was broad and slow, like a gently flowing quilt. There, the beavers would splash and play and relax after a hard day of chewing down trees and building their dams. In other places, the river was all squished together between crags and crooks and curves, and it turned into a raging white water rapid, sweeping things downstream to smash against the rocks. The beavers were excellent swimmers, but even they avoided the worst of the rapids, except... Hey, where are all you kits going? asked Stamps. He was a tough old beaver with silver all through his brown hair, and he was scowling at a group of young beavers as they ran towards some rushing rapids. What there's dangerous swimming. Don't you know you can get knocked right into some rocks? Ah, stick a log in it, old man, said Barry, one of the young beavers, and the others laughed. Barry was the first to reach the water, and she belly flopped in with a whoop, followed by a dozen others. They swam hard against the raging current, tails flailing and paws pulling. Some rolled themselves easily onto the far shore, while others got tumbled about in the river's bubbling current. Old Stamps watched anxiously. His kits were grown and moved to colonies of their own, but he remembered them being small, and he hated to see anyone get hurt. Thankfully, all of the young beavers finally reached the far shore. A few of them had to be pulled up by their laughing friends. They were panting and exhausted, but otherwise unharmed. Well, what's over there that's worth all the trouble? Stamps called across the rushing river. There's plenty of good wood and tender bark and bright greens on this side of the water. Keep your bark, shouted Barry. She was definitely the leader of the rebellious crew. Bentley found an old apple grove over here. They're red and green and sweet as the spring. Old Stamps just shook his head as the youngsters disappeared into the forest. He knew it was useless to argue. Apples were a delicious treat, and there weren't any on the colony side of the rapids. If he was a young beaver himself, he'd probably risk the river with the rest to make a meal of the shiny fallen fruit. But now, all grown and grizzled, he knew it was more dangerous than they thought. If one of them got tired or taken by the rapids, they could get swept into the rocks and break a bone or worse. But what could he do? He sat by the rushing water and thought for a while, and by the time the kits had made their way home, he had an idea. The next day, Barry and her crew came to the rushing section of the river all laughing and jostling each other. When they arrived, they found old Stamps hard at work. He had chewed down some thick pines and sent them crashing into the river. They were laid in the beginnings of a structure, and he was working on felling another as they approached the shore. What are you doing, Stamps? Barry asked. You going to try to block our path? Oh, no, not at all, said Stamps swallowing a mouthful of bark. I just figured since y'all want the apples so bad, I'd build a bridge to make it easier to get across. He stood up and looked critically at some nearby pines, towering tall and thick across. It'd go a lot faster if y'all wanted to lend some help, 
We could get it done in a day, and then you wouldn't have to swim the rapids anymore. We don't need a bridge, said Barry. Just admit that you're too old to swim across, and you need our help. Oh, that's not it at all, scowled Stamps. I'm twice the swimmer as any of you kits. I'm just old enough to know it's better to take a little time and make sure you're safe. This is for your benefit. The other young beavers laughed and slapped their tails. Oh, I'm so old and I can't swim the rapids, <laughs> chuckled Barry in a fake old man voice. Please help me build a bridge. <laughs> Stamp started to reply, but Barry shouted over him, singing out. We don't need your bridges and we don't need your help. We don't want your advice. We'll do it ourselves. We'll swim when it's rough going. In rushing waters, you can keep your bridge. You can keep your bridge. Old Stamp shook his head and went back to work. Kits were ungrateful. That was part of being a kit, and he knew they'd learn some sense eventually. Barry and the others dove into the rapids and started to pedal across. The waters were fast and bubbled like boiling. The strongest swimmers made it across with only a little drifting downstream, but the others were tumbled and pulled and rolled. A few times, Old Stamps thought he was going to have to dive in after them, but they finally made it to the other side. Some were shaken and dizzy, and a couple of others were coughing, but none of them got smashed against the river's hidden rocks, so that was good. Still. When they disappeared into the woods to fetch their apples, Stamps worked double time on his bridge. When the kits came back that night, the water was high and fast and the sky was dark. The beginnings of the bridge were sticking out into the river, but it was only the bare bones with nothing yet to cross. How's the bridge coming, old man? Barry shouted across the water. She had apple juice in her fur and apple seeds in her teeth. Her gang of young beavers was behind her, laughing and slapping their heavy bellies. Stamps ignored her and lashed together some logs to keep them from rolling away in the night. The kits dove in and swam across the rushing water, and this time had even more trouble than before. Their big bellies slowed them down and the dark had hidden waves and whirls. They all made it across, but a few got some bangs and bruises from rocks under the river's surface. Looking a little rough, Stamp said when they dragged themselves to shore. You sure you don't want to help with my bridge? I'd rather help you move to a new colony, said Barry, exhaustion creeping into her voice. Ah, mind your own business. Okay, sure thing, Stamp said rolling his eyes and heading home to sleep. The next morning, he slept in late, only waking up when a crash of thunder shook his den. It was followed by the pitter-patter of rain that steadily increased to a drumming hiss. Hard rain all day today, he said to himself. Maybe I'll take the morning off from working on the bridge. The old beaver started to lie back down, and then lightning flashed, and he had a terrible realization. The kits, he said. In a second, he was out of his den and bolting towards the river rapids. The kits wouldn't know that when a heavy storm came, the river swelled with all the extra water. The rain had nowhere to go but downstream, so the rapids would flow higher and faster and stronger. 
During a downpour like the one he was running through, the river could turn into an irresistible force washing everything in its way downstream. Kits, he shouted as he got to the river's edge. You kits, stay out of the river. It's too wild today. He got to the edge and breathed a sigh of relief as he saw the group of kits standing near his bridge, staring into the raging water. Thank the trees and timber they had good enough sense to stay out of the river when it was storming so badly. Of course, he should have known better. Stamps! Stamps! cried little Bentley, running up to him. Barry said we was wimps for not swimming the river today. She jumped in just before he got here, and she got pulled under. You gotta help! Bentley was still talking, but old Stamps was already running. He took three wobbling steps and then dove into the rushing stream. Immediately, he was spun head over tail by the current and swept towards some rocks. Luckily, old Stamps hadn't been lying about his swimming skill. He had always been the strongest swimmer in the colony, even though the kits were too young to know it. Now, he waved his tail for balance and clawed at the churning water with his mighty webbed paws. Soon, he had himself oriented, and he began to search for Barry, struggling against the current every second. He dove deep, and thankfully, he didn't see her smashed against the rocks. A sudden surge nearly slammed him into a boulder, but he dodged it by inches and then burst back to the surface. The sky was dark with clouds, and thunder rumbled, and the rain came down in hammering sheets. It was hard to see a foot in front of his face. Barry, he shouted, or tried to shout. His voice was ripped out of his mouth by the wind and buried by the rain and thunder. The current tore at him. He could barely hear. He could barely see. A bolt of lightning streaked across the sky, and there, in the brief flash of light, he saw Barry. The little beaver was clinging to a broken branch that was stuck fast between two jagged rocks. Her webbed paws grasped desperately at the slippery wood, and she was inches from being dashed to pieces. Old Stamps started to swim, his paws a blur in the storm. Every stroke was a battle, and his muscles screamed at him to stop. It would be easy to quit. It would be easy to let the current wash him away, but no. He fought through the water and finally reached Barry. Stamps, help me! Her grip slipped and the rain-swelled river swept her towards the sharp stones, but Stamps was there. He grabbed her and rolled her onto his back. She clutched him with all her strength and Stamps pushed off the rocks, knifing through the water. The rain hammered and the thunder bellowed and the lightning crashed and the world was spinning but somehow, some way, Stamps swam them both to shore. When they reached the sandy bank, the kits all cheered, helping Barry and Stamps to safety, panting and sore. A few minutes later, when she had recovered a little, Barry rolled over to look at Stamps. You saved me. You're an incredible swimmer. Why were you wasting your time with the bridge? Stamps looked at her and smiled. Well, like I said, I was building it for you. But why? Because we all live in the same community. Because we should help each other whenever we can. And because I love apples, too. And I wanted you to be able to get them without getting hurt. The other beavers were all crowded around listening now. Oh, well, do you think tomorrow we could help you finish the bridge? Old Stamp smiled wide, his whiskers twitching. Oh, I think that would be great. Me too. And the next day, Old Stamp showed the kits how to build a bridge. They finished it that evening, and from that day on, they could cross the river safely whenever they wanted. And every afternoon, Barry brought Stamp some fresh apples, and they sat and ate them together, watching the rushing river roll on by. The end. Thanks for listening.